Welcome to the Creepin' It Real Show, your one-stop shop for weird news, movie reviews, otherworldly, and paranormal shenanigans. We'll take a dive into what's going on in creepy pop culture. You can follow Creepin' It Real Show on Twitter at creepin underscore it. You can email us at creepinitrealshow at gmail.com. You can also go to our website, creepinitshow.com. Welcome to Creepin' It Real. I'm one of your hosts, Yardley, and I'm going to bring in both of my co-hosts before we dive into this, uh, hopefully, fun episode of reviewing Gerald's Game uh, from north of Atlanta. How are you doing, Christy? Hey, Yardley. Hey, everybody. Doing good. Uh, still reeling, because just watched the movie and never read the book, so holy shit. Yeah, ready to talk about some crazy shit. Well, you're in good company on <laughs> book either and Moni how are you doing out west hey everything is good I just barely made it in for this not that I've had the craziness that Christy has but um just came in from work and ready to talk about this movie although full disclosure I actually I watched this movie a while ago and um forgot that we were doing a podcast tonight so I haven't watched it recently so hopefully I remember it's a pretty simple plot and premise and so hopefully with with uh Yardley's wonderful notes here I'll be able to make it through this otherwise I'll just sound totally uneducated and that'll be funny so there you go yeah we'll be able to <laughs> reach through it and you know luckily for us we have some weird news to jump in on so I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and dive in first uh you know just this week I think it was the the day before yesterday, they released a first look photo of the new Chucky film and the Child's Play remake. So Graham Smith is uh, currently overseeing the Vancouver shoot of that remake, and he's and his producing partner is David Katzenberg. Uh, this new version stars Aubrey Plaza as a mother who gives her son Gabriel Bateman, uh, played by Gabriel Bateman, a toy doll for his birthday, unaware of its more sinister nature. It also stars um, Atlanta's actor Brian Tyree, who plays Paperboy in the series for those who watch it. So Cliff Berg was explaining that he's using practical effects and visual effects to create the new Chucky. He's pretty much tight-lipped about the backstory of the character, which we all know from the first movie. Um, it was essentially a, I think it was the spirit of a, it was the possessed spirit or something like that of a serial killer that wouldn't do the doll. Um, but pretty much they're owning it. They're saying that this Chucky, you know, it's it's our Chucky, and they're basically taking ownership of, you know, this is going to be separate from the things that we're uh, normally used to. Now, I totally believe that they're going to... I think that they're going to do it justice, because I kind of feel like it's not like all of those Chucky movies or something that's totally sacred, and I think that we'll get into this. Um, in a mm. second about what movies are sacred and which ones aren't. But the thing that I find the most interesting is Brad Dorff, who had voiced Chucky in all of the other movies, uh, he wasn't reached out to to do the voice for this. Not saying that they, they won't, but so far um, they haven't even cast a role for that yet. So oh. that's interesting. But uh, for those who are fans of Don Mancini, um, who has written or co-written all of the films in the franchise, um, they actually reached out to him to offer him an executive producer position, which you know he declined. And just recently on Twitter, it kind of seemed like he was trolling uh, the new remake. Oh. Uh, he had like a picture. Yeah, it was like of Mariah Carey saying, I don't know her. And <laughs> it, it, it's kind of funny, though, because you yeah. remember when it was coming out, you know, I, I went into that with, pretty low expectations and I was pleasantly surprised and I feel like this could be something that could be a pleasant surprise and that meme could come back to haunt him because what if this movie comes out and it makes more than like all of the child's play movies put together and then I could see a meme saying I don't know you either you know what I'm saying <laughs> it's gonna you know, so I don't know what do y'all think I'm excited about it I think because I didn't I mean I think they can do better I think it could be better and I think nowadays with the effects that we have, especially with dolls, you know, which I hate dolls. My mom used to force me to collect them and I hated them. I was terrified of them. And so I think Child's Play could be better and I think they can make it better. And I saw that picture that you posted on Facebook and I was creeped out. 
Like, that was a creepy picture that they've, you know, the way they've updated him. So I'm totally for it. I think they, I, I'm, I never thought that we needed it. But then when you posted that, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. That, I can get behind that one for sure. You gave him anime eyes. What do you think about that, Moni? Um, so a few things about it. So this movie came out in 1988 and I was five. So back <laughs> then I didn't mind dolls. Now I do mind dolls. Um, that's like a learned thing. It's like, I didn't mind clowns back when I was a kid, but I hate them now because it and all those other, you know, movies. But so when this movie came out, as far as like, I have, I see your question here, Yardley about, you know, does, does this shit all over the original basically for us or is the original a sacred thing? And to me, the answer is no, because, um, you know, again, I was five. I didn't see it when it first came out. And then even as I grew older, I wasn't really afraid of dolls like in the 90s when I finally saw this film. And I really think I, I agree with Christy. Basically, long story short is I think they can do a better job. And I think it's interesting what you were saying about um, the original guy turning down the executive producer, because quite frankly, I feel like the first weekend of something like this is going to pull regardless of if it's good or not. The opening mm -hmm. weekend is going to be big. And if it's actually well done, which it has the potential to be just, you know, based off of almost nothing, but based off of the, the creepy poster and based off of who is involved in the project, it really could be a good film. And yeah, I mean, we don't know him either. I'm with Yardley. So. Yeah. I mean, for me, I just feel like, the fact that Cliff Burr came out and pretty much said, hey, this is our Chucky. This is our own thing. He's pretty much taken ownership over this entry, you know, in mm -hmm. the property. So I like the fact that they're owning it and it does have potential to mm -hmm. be, you know, I mean, for me, I'm the type of person where I don't want to really sit around and talk about how it ruins the original child's play because it doesn't like that history has been written and everybody has their child's play, you know, DVDs or Blu-rays that they can always revisit. And I like the fact that he took ownership because if it's a hit, they can say you had nothing to do with this. So, you know, don't try to get in on it now. And yeah. I'm a proponent of that type of thinking because it's not as if they didn't reach out to people, you know, who were involved. And, and they did that. So I think that their hands aren't necessarily tied on that front. And uh, one of the questions that I had was uh, if there was a movie that you wouldn't that you don't really feel like anybody should reboot or remake uh, if you had to choose one. And we'll just. Well, we'll, I'll go ahead and go first. I said to train to, to Busan because you know that they're remaking that. James Wan is directing what? Aquaman. Yep. Already? They're, they're going to remake it. That's it's a gonna... new one. That's not even an old movie. Yeah, I, ha I actually have the link in the notes. And it's, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to do it. But some of the people involved, and in, maybe we'll talk about this you know, a, another time. Oh, but... are they making an American version of it? It's, That's what I was going to say. It's, I'm it's assuming the re of, it's like a yeah. reboot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, I, I don't I, I don't know what they're going to do. The I thought have. the first one was solid. So, uh I don't feel like that should be something that should be touched. And the only reason why I picked no. that first is it happens to be more current news. So, uh, Moni, if you had to choose one for nobody could ever touch ever, what is it going to be? Nobody could ever touch. Oh, my goodness. I, I feel like Nightmare on Elm Street shouldn't be touched again because it was touched so poorly, LOL. Um, when they tried to reboot it and they just, just did such a poor job and I was so excited that I've already been let down so hard. And that movie, the original movie, there's some cheesiness, like the music is sometimes a little silly and things like that. The effects aren't perfect. That movie is so fucking scary. Like, I don't care. That guy can kill you if you're alive. That guy can kill you if you're dead. I'm not talking about sequels. I'm talking about trying to reboot it. They already did that. They failed miserably. And I hope that they leave it alone. That being said... <laughs> Good remakes. I'm excited about the Candyman remake because yeah. that movie scares the shit out of me and it hasn't been remade poorly yet. I'm not sure how this new project is going to look, but if they do a good job with it, it can be just as scary as the original and quite relevant to topics of today. So anyway, that's my humble opinion. Well, okay. What you got, Chris? 
Uh, I, so my opinion is that anything that is the comedy horrors of the 80s, I don't think that we could recreate today because it's just, we're just in a different place now. And taking a stab at them, like, I mean, like the ones we've already reviewed and then um, Troll from the 80s and House from, like, those were some of my favorite movies. Um, like, like, uh, uh, creep show. Uh, I mean, they can maybe do it, but I don't think they're going to take the, che- they're not going to get the cheesiness and the kind of humor that the eighties put into these movies. Like they can redo them and take it seriously, but I just don't see somebody tackling them and really making them the cheesy, funny, weird that the eighties captured with those movies so i would say house and troll which i've thought about us reviewing house um but it's so stupid that y'all would hate me for making you watch it it it's just i love it because it's so stupid and it's a horror movie and but it's even dumber than the ones i I mean mean, it's never going to be jeepers creepers three so well i mean this is at the bar high slash low with that (laughs) this is something that's actually just so dumb and also kind of creepy scary like i haven't watched it in years and i'm wondering is it as weird and creepy as i remember it as a child but also funny too because like the monsters in there are so absurdly ridiculous that you're just going what in the world like it's just so random we might um i might i might throw a curveball or you know not can't think of something and throw out house but if somebody tried to remake house they would do a horrible job i just know it there's no way you can capture that cheesy horror from the 80s for sure you know something that i like that you said was just the fact that how you talk about we're in a different time so a lot of these remakes where they're kind of reaching back to old properties yeah it actually it just makes a lot of sense we're in a different place people think a different way and and it's kind of hard to recapture that so I think you do at this point. Uh, I mean, Mona, would you say that people definitely do have to just start taking ownership and just saying if they're going to do it, look, this is my thing. I'm not trying to be this. I take full ownership of the success, you know, or, or of the failure. I think that's the best way to go. I think, yeah, I'm being gracious about, like, this was my idea, just to remind people, but also, like, congratulations on your newfound success. I think (laughs) the smartest play these days is to make sure that whatever agreements you sign include some kind of uh, royalties. Like, even if you're like, F this, I don't want to be involved, but secretly, like, you're actually getting kickbacks every time that something paraphernalia from the new movie is sold. That That's probably the smartest play for everyone involved. Like, but Moni, think about it. Like, and this is a good question for you, because you just watched this movie for the first time. Can you imagine somebody taking Return of the Living Dead and remaking it today? And like... No. Mm -mm. how could we possibly recreate that like i can't like i can see somebody tackling exorcist i could see phantasm well for me the the, um just how i took yardley's question that was like what was sacred to me to not be Mm -hmm. remade versus what could be done well could be done well yeah any of those you're right any of the the cheesy 80s stuff had its time and place and just can't be recreated and even you know they've tried to do a television show on mtv for scream which is of course a 90s film but just saying like some of these things are kind of a time capsule. I yeah. feel like though Nightmare on Elm Street being one of my favorites kind of almost transcends time, mm-hmm. you know, of just the, the premise and the story. Uh, yeah, obviously I mean, the clothing could be updated and stuff, but I don't think they could do a better job with it. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I think like horror itself as the generations pass, technology, lives, the planet, like, uh, evolves and there's great new ways to tackle horror in a modern way but when I for for me for some reason the cheesy horror just belongs in the 80s like for like the legit stuff that we just talked mm-hmm. about like yeah, we can they're... do like Shaun of the Dead is one of my favorite um, zombie flicks and it is so cheesy but it's British humor like it just mm-hmm. works because it's British humor and as an American we find it so funny how like polite they are and they're like even polite to zombies they're like yes please co-, you know <laughs> and so it's just funny 
but tackling the stuff that the 80s horror did like i can't imagine somebody picking that up and going i can make this better or i can even try to recreate this in modern day it just nobody would find it like that it made any sense i think you know because when you watch it you're like yeah this was the 80s mentality like i can't imagine us thinking like that mentality now I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but that's the only thing. I get you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that we can all agree I'm kind of in line with what Moni was saying. Just kind of respect the past, but exactly. you, you definitely you definitely have to have to move on um, mm-hmm. sometimes. And sometimes we get drag kicking and screaming because we don't want something to change when in reality it's impossible to change it because it's already happened. Now, Let's talk about some weird news. Christy, let us know what the St. Louis Six Flags is offering to customers. Uh, I haven't officially read this, but I saw the line. I was been very busy today and kind of ran in and was like, okay, weird news, weird news. And I've seen this, this headline several times. And honestly, it sounds kind of good to me right now because I think that I could lay in one spot for 30 hours and not care one bit. So apparently the Six Flags in St. Louis is offering a $300 prize, season tickets, and other perks, and all they have to do is spend 30 hours in a coffin. Neat. Um, the <laughs> participants chosen for the ghoulish contest will bide their time in a two by seven foot coffin from 1 p.m. 1 p.m. October 13th to 7 p.m. October 14th at the park. The contest celebrates the 30th year of Fright Fest. So, okay, they do get a bathroom break. That was my first question. What about when they have to go to the bathroom? But otherwise, remain coffin bound. All who can beat the challenge get two 2019 gold season passes and other park prizes. If more than one makes it to the 30th, to 30 hours, a drawing will... Do- oh, hell Can no. Can you imagine not getting it after Oh, no, 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 I'm like pissed. That. Well, <laughs> and you also... You will find me $300, motherfucker. Well, well, here's the thing. It's a $300 prize or whatever, right? The season tickets. The other perks just means free parking and like 10% <laughs> off of a month. Yeah, whoopity-doo. But the funny thing about it is the $300 prize, like, you know, I, I get season tickets to you know the the six flags down mm-hmm. here right yeah and every year like they just did a a flash sale you know the other week basically the 300 hundred dollar prize is basically two season tickets in the flash sale you, you, you know what I mean? so that's not a big deal and then you said you're doing all this just for a chance and how many people do you know christy spend 30 hours at six flags at a summer, like 30 hours worth of Six Flags time. That, that, that's a lot of hours. Like, mm-hmm, if you go yeah. to Six Flags in Georgia, that's you're trying insane. to get the hell out in five hours or less. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just, I mean, I, hey, I do a lot of things for money. This is Moni, by the way, so holla at your girl, because I do a lot, I would do a lot of things for money. But $300 for that <laughs> much time in a coffin, that's not enough money. You got to give me like $3,000, then we can talk about it. But yeah, and up here, like Six Flags, you know, we have Disneyland, we're spoiled. We have Disneyland, we have all those things up here. And so it's like Six Flags, it would be like collective yawn, like as far as the theme park itself. So no, I'm not in, um, but like I said, up it and we'll talk. I mean, I, okay, I was just excited about the nap for 30 hours. So that's where I get, I'm like, I could totally lay in a padded bed with a lid covered Sleeping for 30 hours right now sounds really good to me. But if I get to the end and somebody else is doing it, yeah. and then you ch- like you couldn't get, like, really, Six Flags? You couldn't penny up the fucking money to give all of them mon- the prize? You're a bunch of cheap bastards. That's I'm sorry. Pretty- that's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> yeah, <it's just> <laughs> I would never that's, do that's, that. It's so, it's so weak. Now... <laughs> I don't know now. Moni might have you matched. For, <laughs> this looks hysterical, for, by the way. I don't know what this is. but All right. Well, well tell us about the sex storm, Moni. <laughs> so first of all, um, this comes from the Scottish Sun, which if, I, if you guys remember was where I read that last sex doll article that made me laugh so hard about how they shot the first porn, just because yeah. of the way that it was written. So right off the bat, the title Sex storm, women in <laughs> stitches after neighbor's stash of sex toys blows out of wheelie bin during storm alley's 100 mile per hour winds. So they just, they have me, like, obviously in America, in stitches is not a common <laughs> phrase about laughing really hard. 
Um, and wheelie bin, that's a trash can, right? With a, with a pair of wheels on it. I don't. Yeah. So, yeah. so she didn't hilarious. get hurt. She was sure. just laughing. Is that what yes. it is? Okay. Yes. I'm thinking she got I, injured. <laughs> no. I think you can see the wheelie bin. There's a the photo though. Photo. Yes. Uh, yeah. So what we have here wow. is a, uh, a kinky hall destined for the dump was blown out of a wheelie <laughs> bin in our shire during Storm Alley's 100 mile per winds yesterday. Amused Carrie McNeil couldn't believe her eyes when she noticed the items near her house. Sharing a snap on social media, she said, Willie Bins by the other place, this is Lion Street. Anyway, the X, X, X rated runaways included a vibrator, anal beads, and lube. Like, this looks like a party laying right here. First in the of all, I'm those just... anal beads. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Those, those are. Uh... <laughs> they do. <laughs> holy is that holy. a speculum? Is it that looks that like a gynecologist is? speculum. Yeah. <laughs> there's a speculum, and then there's oh there's um, duct tape, which that's. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of tape that doesn't leave a lot of adhesive on things. Duct tape is not one of the ones you want to use. I'm just oh, saying. Okay. So, thanks for the thanks for the um, 411 on sexual intercourse tape. Yeah, don't use don't use duct tape for anything on your body though. Like that's just a rule. Like unless you want to like tie someone up. Well, Gerald's games can lead right in. Okay, but unless yeah. you want to tie someone up in a padded room so they can stay for good or peel, risk peeling their skin off, like. Then again, this woman, those are giant anal beads. So maybe, you know. Maybe, maybe it's a man. Hey, maybe it's a man. Let's just Do say you that. think, well, they're all, everything there is pink, but you know, sure, That's maybe it's a man. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but when do you buy, who has male vibrators? Like, maybe that's all they had. Maybe they just Someone wrote, them. one Facebook user after they posted this on social media, everything there for a good night. While another added, someone been having fun, lucky sods. <laughs> so, yeah. a little bit of Scottish uh, humor for I, you there. I mean, maybe I'm pretty sure wow. there's probably more of that stuff. Like, you know what I mean? If that's the stuff that they're throwing out, they probably got like a duffel bag full of full of yeah, good times. They have a room. <laughs> it's all still lying there, so she's obviously far too embarrassed to go out and pick it up. God, can you imagine? Um, so Excuse I me, want to know from you guys. <laughs> Do you go knock on your neighbor's door and like, hey, you want a party? Uh, or do so, you like politely not no. say anything? How do you handle this? I'd be like, excuse me, ma'am, your anal beads are <laughs> in front of my trash can. You might want to get those before the trash comes around. I'd go over there in stitches, yeah, and, yeah. and tell them to get their thing. <laughs> you hardly come over with like a bottle of champagne. Hello. Uh, uh, I'm like, wow. Hello, <laughs> like, I, never, yeah, I never knew. I never, how do you know until the a whirlwind tornado comes in and blows her drawer out into the street? <laughs> but but at, the, at the end of the day, I, I just, I, I would never, I wouldn't be surprised. You she's, know what I mean? That, that people. She's probably like fun. 75 in DTF. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, on that note, let's go ahead and uh, dive into uh, to Gerald's game. So, uh, Gerald's game is a 2017 psychological horror film directed and edited by Mike Flanagan, written by Jeff Howard and Mike Flanagan. It's based on Stephen King's 1992 novel, and it film. Uh, I mean, the actual the stars are uh, Carla. Carla, what is it, Gugino and Bruce Greenwood. I, actually, Bruce Greenwood is a great actor. I, I, I like a lot of the stuff um, that he's been in. But uh, we actually, this is actually on Netflix, which I am, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for. Uh, Netflix has kind of provided some, uh, uh, you know, a few of the movies that I have picked, and it's something that are creepers as well. I think a lot of people have Netflix, so it also gives you know, everybody an opportunity to be able to uh, to check this out. So all in all, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a, a brief synopsis uh, and then what we're going to do, I have a couple of questions that we're going to kind of piece together, uh, I guess, through the you know, all three acts of this film. But uh, we, we should be able to knock it out pretty quickly because I think the movie clocked in at about, what, uh, an hour and a half, maybe? Yeah, it's pretty short. Seems like it. Yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, well, the movie starts off with uh, Jesse Burlingame and her husband, Gerald. They're driving to a secluded cabin in western Maine for an offbeat romantic day. As they get close to the cabin, Gerald almost hits a dog that's standing in the middle of the road. 
After they get to the cabin, Jesse sees the dog again and feeds it some raw meat that Gerald had stocked in the cabin's refrigerator for the weekend retreat. Gerald comes and gets her, guides her into the house, and idiotically, they leave the front door open. A major point of emphasis that they zoomed in on. So I have to ask both of you, are you likely, even if you're out there and you think you're alone, are you likely to just leave the door that I'm open. a city girl. I lock all the doors That's all the crazy. time. Yeah. No I'm not, I mean, I, I don't leave the door open be, or close or close the door because I'm afraid of intruders, but I close the door because I don't like fucking bugs coming in the house. So, yeah, uh, yeah I close yeah. the door. I mean, that's yeah. just close the door. Yeah. Mosquitoes galore. Yeah. Yeah. The door. Yeah. Death. 100% critters. So the- so the fact that they made this a point of emphasis, we know that that's going to be revisited a little bit later on. In Foreshadowing. The <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Gerald's a successful lawyer. Um, one of the things he's been able to do to reinvigorate the couple's sex life is incorporating bondage into it. So after the couple unwinds, uh, Gerald handcuffs Jesse to the bed. And even though Jesse has enjoyed this game before, she's suddenly reneging <laughs> at the proposition. Now, this is something else I want to ask y'all. So if you're taking a, uh, you know, a sex trip, because that's basically what it was, uh, with the person that you're with, I mean, I think, you know, when you leave, you kind of know what's up. And I just kind of, it's kind of interesting how in this film, uh, she seems kind of almost, well, I kind of get what was going on. Because when they were driving, he kind of put his leg on her dress and then she holds his hand. So I kind of get that, you know, it's like, hey, you need to pay more attention to me, blah, blah, blah. But this is the sex trip. So, you know, you know what I mean? You already mm-hmm. know what's up. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if I want to say, like, she was wrong for kind of acting kind of funny once they set all this stuff up. But at the same time, it's like, why, you know, you could have stayed funny back in Maine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, that, psychology that was... of women, I think, just, you know, from looking at her perspective, trying to, it's a sex trip. So you're there to have sex. That's one thing. But if your relationship isn't great, maybe just the first time that you have sex during said sex trip, like, what's the hurry? You've got all weekend or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe you don't put the handcuffs on me the very first time, especially when I ask you not to. And as we see in a minute, he still crawls on top of her anyway. So that's, yeah. that's my whole thing. Just if your relationship's yeah. in a bad place. True He's that. into a thing. Yes, we're here to to get down, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to be handcuffed to a bed while we go at it for the first time in potentially like a contentious, not so great relationship situation that they're in right now. The That's thirst, all I'm saying from a woman's perspective. The, the <laughs> thirst was real, you know. With yeah, Jill. I, I definitely yeah, he have was, to. Uh... He was all throwing everything out there right when they walked in the door. I was kind of like, damn, like, not even yeah. some wine, or what about the Kobe steaks? Like, yeah. beer, what, what or the music on, shit. Man, on. <laughs> that was, that's what I was thinking, too. It's like, nobody had no drinks. No. no. You know, it was just nothing. So I guess well, we've got to kind of put that on the, the, the directors and things like that. But it, it's, it's funny. I'm, I'm hoping that the book, I'm sure the book has probably a little bit. That's one thing. Rick does a celebratory dance when I've had some drinks because he's like, I'm going to get some. So when (laughs) he's ready, like he wants me to relax. The first thing he does is buy me like my favorite wine. Like, and I'm just not saying that, like, just, you know, get your chick drunk. But they've been together for a long time. He knows kind of how to, he, this is his wife. Like, how does he not know how to woo her yet? And, and it seems like he's, extremely selfish which we'll dive into that but uh like what about your chick girl dude you drive her over here she's got this really pretty negligee on you should have wooed her a little before you strap her to a fucking that's bed. all i'm saying yeah, yeah. Like, i'm negligee. cool with being she had on <laughs> well you know for her it was and um and like w- like compliment her which he's like yeah nice nice negligee all right i'm gonna strap you to this bed and you know have my way with you and it's like wait like how about a little bit of like emotional foreplay, you know, versus like everything about you. So yeah, I was yeah. a little, my, my hackles were up already by now. I was like, dude, you're not playing it smart. Just saying. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, now let me come at this from the perspective of a dude. Now, sometimes though, and I get everything that y'all said is very valid things and I get it, but let's make no mistake. I mean, sometimes, 
you just want to just throw down. You know what I mean? Like all that extra Absolutely. isn't, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's not yeah. even, you know, so sometimes it's like that too. But anyway. But if you're going to like throw out handcuffs, like give her, like toast her up a little bit, like whatever her thing is, like hey, I agree hang with out you. and give a little bit of a, like a, hey, let's have a good time. Yeah. Let me hear Absolutely. about your day. You know, well, I don't know like about it, something. That's not the trip. That's not to hear about your day trip, though. I don't think. No, like, that's, but no, something just, like in yeah. like give a a little bit of a of a like about her before you, you throw her on that. a bed and and handcuff her. Is all you right. ask yeah. that before you leave Maine, but uh, <laughs> but okay. As as Chrissy was saying earlier, uh, you know, so Gerald is really thirsty. He's turned on. He starts to crawl <laughs> on top of her. Um, he knows that Jesse's protests are real, but he ignores them. I guess it's part of his, uh, what, what turns him on. So Jesse responds by kicking him in the stomach and in the groin. And then a second later, Gerald clutches his chest in pain and he falls from the bed on the floor and has a fatal heart attack. Yeah. So, <laughs> so let's talk about what led up to this as well. So in this movie, as opposed to in the book, um, so in the movie, Gerald has like these hundred milligram um, Viagra tablets in the movie, and then I guess he takes two of them or something. Crazy. Yeah, stupid. Yeah. And he so he takes two hundred milligrams of this. He looks like I mean, like I said, uh, the actor looks. He looks like he's in just great shape. You know what I mean? Um, but he, he takes it, and you know he ends up you know, having the heart attack. So at this point. Um, of course, Jesse, she's she's in a pickle, you know? <laughs> she's, a, a little bit. A pickle. They didn't That's use, like, the word. fuzzy hand cuffs that just come right off, so no, shit. No, no, no. So Jesse's alone in the cabin. She's unable to move or call for help because she's uh, handcuffed to the bed. Eventually, of course, the stray dog from earlier comes in through the house, through the open door, and starts feeding on Gerald's body. Ugh. Now, yeah, that was it, it was it was pretty rough because first of all, this dog looked like he um, she gave him like some Kobe beef or something, some mm -hmm. nice meat, and of course it's not satisfied, so it starts to eat onto Gerald's body. Now, after Gerald has been dead for a while, Jesse is starting to have a lot of hallucinations. They're brought on because she's dehydrated. She's got a lot of anxiety of potentially dying in the bed. And her first hallucination is of a disfigured man holding a bag of trinkets whom she mistakes as a spirit of her long dead father. So Gerald, in another hallucination, calls the disfigured man the man made of moonlight. And this guy's played by um, Carol Strecken, who played in Twin Peaks, Gotham. I think he was like Herman Munster in the Addams Family movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he played Star Trek. Uh, in Star Trek The Next Generation. So he's been in a, a lot more things than that, but uh, those are some um, some movies that he's been in or TV shows that I think people can, you know, get a mental picture of him. So another of Jesse's hallucinations has Gerald called in her mouse, which triggered a memory of her father, who used to mm -hmm. call her mouse as well. So in the memory, she's looking at a solar eclipse on a bench with her father, and he asks her to sit on his lap which prompts him to masturbate while she's on his lap. Ew. <laughs> so eventually her father says that he was ashamed of what happened and convinces her not to tell anyone. All of these events trigger and affect things that are going on in the present with her husband, Gerald, whom she married partly because he was like her father. So Jesse remembers cutting her right hand that night and she squeezed the glass too hard when her mother had asked her about the eclipse that she watched with her father. So after the hallucination, Jesse figures a way out of her current situation. Now, let's go back to the eclipse and that scene um, with her father. And I really do love the way. Or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how the movie is, it's like the color red. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, I, I thought that that was pretty great. But I heard the gasp about, you know, the dad and her sitting in the lap. And it's true, because when you're watching that scene, you're like, man, this is kind of, yeah. you know. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. And then with the clips going on, it just made it really weird. But the way that they shot those scenes and they used the color red, I thought was uh, I thought was pretty cool. So uh, how did you how did y'all feel about that? And at this point, did you know that they were going down the PTSD? Well, I think they did a good job. I, and I haven't read this particular Stephen King novel, but I think they did a good job bringing in 
a backstory without making the movie too much longer that made sense as to why she behaves the way she does now and what things inform her state of mind and all those kind of things. So I thought that was nicely done because I think it's hard. Stephen King always has so much backstory and so much characterization that it's hard to like capture that properly as we've seen with a lot of the films that have been made out of his books that were super shitty. So, you know, because this one, they did a good job with the whole, I'm just going to say overall, I enjoyed the film. And I think this was the best, best quote unquote, you know, if they were going to put that in the story, which was from the book way to quickly yet with lots of impact inform the audience as to like her state of mind and, and where this character has been and make you kind of feel things for her and, and that kind of thing. Well, it sucks you in. Like we were talking about the color red, you know, that's the color of extremes. The cover, uh, sometimes they say, you know, the passionate love, lust, desire, violence, danger. It encompasses a lot of things. So the way that they melt that in and then put you in, a, in, um, in an uncomfortable place as a viewer in a lot of these scenes, I thought was a. Uh, I thought it was great. I mean, did it did it sell you on being disgusting, Christy? Because they didn't really show a lot. I mean, you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. disturbing like that, but it was a uh, mixture of, the, you know, the well, colors. Well, first, it was very unexpected. It wasn't something I thought was going to be a part of the film. So it was just a, a surprising addition, I think. Um, and it was disturbing, I mean, it made sense because she was very upset that he, her husband, was asking her to call him daddy. So you can imagine that, um, guys, I watched it like two hours ago, so it's really fresh in my memory, where um, she was upset. She was like, I don't want to call you daddy. Like, unhan- un- you know, get me out of these handcuffs. I can understand. But you- and in the same aspect, you know, he didn't know that that's why she was upset. Um, But, you know, how do you blame her either? Because those are things that are just very hard to talk about and communicate. And really? (laughs) Sorry. Anyway, um, so it was, I wasn't expecting it. And it was a hard addition. It was already a hard situation. So it's like, damn it, Stephen King, why do you have to have so many... Um, layers to your stories because it was a rough thing to digest knowing that oh my god like that's why she was freaking out when her husband was like call me daddy and she was like ow you know like freaking out about it oh that's why shit and of course that brings up all those horror horrible memories when she's trying to figure out how the hell she's gonna get out of there so wow I mean what a it was it was powerful to me it really was yeah yeah, yeah I, I thought that they I thought that they sold it well. I definitely thought that, you know, at that point in the movie, that was definitely one of the highlights that kind of will be something that I'll always remember uh, about this movie. So uh, as we were mentioning before, um, Jesse, you know, through her hallucination, um, she kind of figures out a way to potentially get out of the situation based off of her crushing the glass when her mother had asked her about how the eclipse was. Um, there's a water glass that's literally right at the end of where the handcuffs are on the shelf that's right above Jesse. So she ends up getting it in her hand and, <laughs> cr- you know, crushing the glass like yeah. she did when she was a youngster. So essentially what she does is she tries to, she well, she doesn't try. She basically... Oh. Cuts her wrist. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't and do loosen, it. Oh, God. And she loosens up her skin and essentially just rips the skin oh. off trying to twist her arm out of the handcuff. It definitely works, but I tell you what, the oh. prosthetics department, that, that was, I, I probably would have passed out. And as I put in the notes, one, would you do it? Two, would it really work? Because I just don't think that skin comes off like that that easily, you know? And oh. And I I think eventually I would have done something like tried something like that. But also you're dealing with the wrists. I mean, there's a reason why when people slash their wrists, they die. Like you have to be careful with all the shit that's in there. Yeah. I don't know that skin works that way, but I would have, I would have tried something along those lines. I mean, I've seen saw like hot seesaw. We've all seen saw. (laughs) Like we cut, we got to do what you got to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. But damn. I mean, I think, in my mind, I was thinking of other ways, and maybe I was wrong. 
But I was just kind of like, first of all, I thought what she did with the straw, with the tag, you know, and I loved the, um, the way they did the film where, um, they had him and her independently standing there communicating with her, almost like the devil and the angel, like when you're in your mind. And, um, it was a great way to show, because how do you play a movie from a book? Because in the book, it's thoughts and stuff, and you don't have to necessarily have a character because for the eyes. Yeah. So I thought they did a really good job with that. And then, you know, she was like, and you're, you know, you're, it was a new gown. And she's like, oh, my gosh, yes. And the tag was up there, and she rolled it up into a straw because she couldn't, she couldn't drink her glass of water because she couldn't reach her mouth. So she used that as a straw. I thought that was genius. <sighs> and, then, um, and then again... The, you know, her, she was reminding herself about him taking the pill. She's like, but you like that he took his pill. Like, reminder, he put his glass up there. And so I thought it was really brilliant how they did that. But when they did the whole taking her hand, oh, my God. I, I, I can watch pretty much anything except for eyeballs being poked out. Like, I can't do that. But I couldn't watch that. Like, that was amazing I, I mean, for this to be not a main feature film in a movie theater, they really did good. Like, I was really shocked. It was nasty, nasty wow. what she did. So, kudos to them. They, I was, na oh, it was, it was nasty. Yeah. Sorry, that's I all cringed. I got. That's when I texted y'all, ah! <laughs> and, and then I did hashtag, like a glove because <laughs> i was like oh God. i know that you're hardcore so yeah i mean like i said I, it's been a while since i watched it but from what i remember yeah it did um but i like i like blood and gore and i can handle even eyeballs being poked out so no, usually i'm just like oh cool so kind of mm -hmm. doodly about it <laughs> yeah I, i'm with you it made me cringe though because it did look it was like oh my gosh i just don't think that skin uh, skin is more resilient oh than they yeah, portray in that probably. Though. Because it looked all floppy and super. Uh, you know, we uh, all know that that's thanks. not the case. Um, but, you know, I think I just really, I felt for her. Like, I was in, like, I was her. Does that make sense? Like, I was sitting there thinking, what would you do? Like, that's crazy. And I really was in that moment, like, sitting there with her and thinking that can't be the only thing, your only option. It just can't be. No, like, I just couldn't. Not. That but, we'll talk about this at the end. Let me let okay, me go ahead good. and just wrap up this <laughs> wrap this up really quickly. So um, Jesse ends up, you know, after her hand uh, gets out of the out of the um, out of the handcuffs, she ends up dragging the bed to the handcuff key. She unlocks her other hand. She ends up drinking some water and she bandages herself, but she ends up passing out because of the blood loss and fatigue, you know? So when she wakes up, the man made of moonlight is at the end of the hall and she gives him her wedding ring for his trinket uh, bag. So she makes it to her car and drives away, but then she sees the man again in the back seat, which causes her to crash the car into a tree and she ends up being saved by people from a nearby house. So we fast forward about six months and Jesse's writing a letter to a 12 year old self as a means of coping with what happened with her father during the eclipse. She was struggling to write with her hand that needed a bunch of skin grafts. So we've got voiceovers in different scenes describing how she had pretended to have amnesia over the whole ordeal of being trapped, avoiding, you know, she avoids painful questions and, and such. But she uses, and I, and I don't know if this is really specified, but she ends up using Gerald's life insurance to start a foundation. Actually, it, it was mentioned in the montage. Um, but she ends up starting a foundation for victims of sexual abuse. But each night, the man made of moonlight still appears before her as she falls asleep. Her wedding ring was never found in the house, and she ends up learning from the news that there was a man who has, uh, I think it's called acromegaly, which is a disorder that revolts from excess growth hormone. It causes disfiguration of the head and all of your body parts. And it turns out he was a serial killer who essentially dug up crypts. He'd steal bones and jewels 
and he would occasionally eat the faces of the male corpses. So this explains a little bit why he didn't harm Jesse in the house and also why Gerald's face was disfigured. And this was something that I highlighted because we thought from the beginning that the dog was the one that was chewing on Gerald. And I'm wondering how many times did she think it was a dog and it was really that dude who was, you know, eating her husband's face because she was having all these hallucinations. So do y'all think that that was a play that they're, they were trying to do to make us wonder, was it really the dog or was it really him? Or do we really think that, you know, it was the dog the whole time and she was imagining or was it? Well, the and having not seen it for a while, weren't we supposed to also not be a hundred percent sure until they actually caught the man made of moonlight, like until they actually caught him, weren't we supposed to also not be sure that he existed, that he wasn't yeah. just a figment yeah. of her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think they did a really good job with that. And then, yeah, I guess I never thought about it as far as the dog. Um, but that's all I really have to say. Sorry. <laughs> just yeah, I mean, for me, I, well, yeah, I was thinking that it was probably more the man made of moonlight because remember, she had fed the dog and it just didn't make sense for me for the dog to go wild after she that had fast. fed it. Yeah, yeah, to just walk in there and then start eating it. So I'm thinking it was that guy the whole time. But what um, did okay? So what did he say when she walked in the court? And he's like, "Did he say you're real or you're?" Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Did he not think she was real? Like, I, yeah, I so she so. thought he wasn't real, and he thought she wasn't real. Is that really what I saw? Because that's what I just watched it, and I'm like, "What?" No, so he's what like, "He's like, yeah. you're really real," and he broke all his like. He was standing there in the chains in front of the judge and, you know, looking all like just wah, wah. And she walked in and he turned around and he saw her and he like broke the chains like they were just nothing, like paper. And everybody's yeah. like, ah, oh! but all he was doing was going, you're real. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was the crazy part is that they both thought each other was a figment of their imagination. Well, well, how much they were both so messed up weird. In yeah, it, yeah. Exactly, because yeah. one of the things that, um, basically when the guy's getting sentenced, what you were referring to, Christy, um, she sees Gerald's face and Tom th uh, Tom's face as well. But remember, she says to the guy, you're so much smaller than yeah. I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Well, she also kind of saw her dad's face, which is the whole thing. And I think that was her thing was larger than life this huge burden and secret uh and when she walks up to him it was just a person you know mm -hmm. and it was kind of like yeah. she could put it to bed after that after confronting in her mind confronting all of them all her monsters mm -hmm. all her secrets mm -hmm. and so i think that's kind of what it was but it shocked me that he then also thought she wasn't real that's yeah. where i it blew me away i was like what he I mean, it makes sense that he'd leave her in her handcuffs because now he can go eat her husband's face and take all their jewelry and come and go as he pleases. So I was like, oh, he's just left her. But he didn't think she was real, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, then, yeah. but the dog bit her foot, too. And so that's yeah. why I'm kind of like, what yeah, was or did that? he try it and decide for in his crazy mind that she didn't exist and so didn't do it anymore? I don't know. Yeah, well, exactly. remember, so she, remember she had that vision um that one where the guy was licking her feet and then it, oh, it kind of yes. morphed into the dog so i'm yes. thinking the whole yeah. time it was that guy wow. maybe she I actually coped nuts. with it by believing it was the dog it, because it, exactly oh i mean he doesn't even look like a person so it's like that that thing and then the dog i mean yeah i can imagine like how so. do you process that being handcuffed to a bed you know so That's what was grosser, the, the dog licking your feet or the or the or the dude? The man, the dude. <laughs> I can understand a dog. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm definitely thinking those hallucinations. Most most of it was a guy because I'll never, you know. I think for me the the key was the fact that it was specific that she had fed the dog, and it just wouldn't make sense for the yeah. dog to come in and start eating. The, I mean, it, yeah, <laughs> and that's what like. Dogs don't eat people until they're locked, like, in with them and have no food. Like, they're not just going to come over and just start eating. No. Them. That's just... what I was saying. It, it was really quick for him to go wild, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't happen. But, but I mean, that they makes did... the whole thing creepier, doesn't it? Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. Actually. As I'm sitting here with my dog. <laughs> I'm like, you well, never well, eat no, me, I'm just would you? It makes it creepier just knowing that, I, I'm, well, at least in my opinion, that the whole time you just, it's oh, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, He's yeah. I mean, if I'm so. dead and my dog can't eat, by all means, eat me. I'm dead. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I'll be happy to know that they stayed alive and did, like, I was a part of that. But a person who, like, is fucked up like that? No, 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 no. No, that's not incomprehensible. Like I can't, can't compute <laughs> at all. Like no. Yeah. And he did well, it by choice. It wasn't like he was hungry or starving. He was just breaking into people's places, and he hit the fucking jackpot, breaking yeah. into that place. And there's a dead dude on the floor. <laughs> well, and a we... three carat diamond ring. You know, <laughs> he's yeah, like everything I mean... he wants right there. Oh, well, look, in. before we wrap this puppy up, let's just quickly talk about our favorite parts of the movie or, or some of the things that you felt worked the best. Uh, for me, I mentioned earlier, you know, the transition of young Jesse talking to her father, to the Moonlight Man, you know, licking the feet. That's what we were just talking about. The color red, you know, that stood out, the spots that they picked to use that. And uh, I just think the fact, the discussion that we were just having about wondering, hey, was it a dog or was it, uh, the Moonlight Man. I thought that that was dope, but I think for me, the crown jewel was definitely the peeling off of the skin, trying to take it out oh. of hand. Because I, I got caught off guard. I was like, wow, you know, that that was more, they, they really got more gruesome than I thought that they would get yeah. on that. And and they did it pretty quickly, but uh, that that's, that's what I'm probably going to remember the most. Mm, I like the Moonlit Man, and I like the I like the premise of the of this whole thing because movie and book because it's like um, it feels like something that could happen to any couple more or less something like this and that's that's kind of a creepy premise and then of course obviously the extenuating circumstances of the open door and possibly a dog and possibly the moonlight man like I think they did a really good job with this film in a semi short amount of time. Um, yeah, the color red, you're right. That does like even having watched it a while ago sticks out in my mind. So. They did. That was an interesting, almost comic booky, but that moment was so off-putting that I try not to <laughs> think about yeah. it too much. Yeah, um, yeah the Moonlight yeah. Man was a highlight for me. I, I thought he was pretty creepy. Yeah, I mean, the little girl sitting on the bench, um, basically in a perpetual uh, eclipse, like red eclipse in her mind, I thought that was really poignant um, and sad. I think you know, coming from the background that I do, that was a little rough to digest. It's kind of like, really? Gosh, I wasn't expecting that, and it was kind of hard. But I think her uh, victory at the end of finally moving forward with it was very powerful. Um, she took control. It was funny, like, doing something like this, uh, dodging death the way that she did, finally propelled her to speak out and conquer her demons. And that was a very powerful part of it. And then yeah. I really loved how they did the, her husband and her like conver having conversations. I thought they handled that really well. Like listen, like, she's ready to freak the fuck out and she's got her standing there all put together and him standing there and they're like helping her through this. And yeah. she's working through it and processing it in her brain. And I, I really liked that. I thought that was a good way to put together what she's going through. Instead of it just being her, they added different elements to that. And I really liked that. And I thought that was a great way to digest her thoughts. Was making yeah. it him and her, her again. Like her with her standing there. And him. Him and him, like him laying there getting eaten by a dog and then, or an <laughs> old man. And then him also, you know, a figment of her imagination, having conversations and helping her process and get through this and survive. So it was a very angel devil type situation. And I really liked how they did that. So those were my two favorite things for sure. Yeah. And I thought it was good. I mean, because at, at the beginning, you know, it, it, it makes you go from you're like, all right. You know, Gerald's about to get some. And then you look at all the signals that she gave him. And then by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, my God, you know, this woman, you know, she <laughs> she went through all this stuff that was young and like all yeah. of these triggers happened to her. And like by the end, you're like, oh, man, you know, uh, 
like, damn, Jesse, like I now I understand why, you know, in a way, partially why you were acting the way that you were acting. Yeah. You know, earlier. Yeah. But it also makes you wonder how much she had discussed these things. Cause obviously not. Cause this is obviously a lot of stuff that she kept on the inside. But I'm wondering how much communication did she have with Gerald, you know, uh, about those events. So I wonder well, if she said nothing. Explores that. Yeah, yeah, you can okay. see why that marriage was having problems. Yeah. With yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's they said in the movie because they act, he he plays dumb as his his figment character, mm -hmm. where the other figment character of her is like, when you when you when this happened with him, and she's like, no, no, don't say that. And the uh, his figment character is like, what? What are you talking about? Like, she's playing this all out in her head because he didn't know. And then he's like, why didn't you ever tell me? And she's like, because it was a secret. It was always a secret. I never told anybody. Mm -hmm. And that was like the whole beginning of the story. Mm -hmm. So she never told a soul. So I well, can imagine years of that can really fuck you up. You know? Now, am I think of am I thinking of another movie? But didn't they say that? Uh, wasn't they mentioned they were married for like seventeen years? Mm-hmm. For like yeah. seventeen. See, that's that's that that's just a, that that's a long time. I mean, I <laughs> it's like man, yeah, yeah. like please. Please, it, like, it happens though. It happens yeah, it to me. Does. It's a different it generation to too. They're not maybe as communicative. And it it and happens it's kind to of me. Sad. I mean, I just now sad, told maybe. Rick like two years ago that what happened to me when I was a kid. So well, it's it, just it, something that you like don't think will affect you, but you realize yeah. it does later down the road. And then you have what are you gonna do? And their yeah. marriage was already in a shit spot. Like, so it wasn't just the. I mean, he really was disrespectful to women in general yeah, really like, yeah and so i think how do you open up to somebody that's like that anyway like i couldn't feel yes. like i could share that with somebody if they were like that oh the only what was it like the only thing you're just a support a life support system for your cunt i think was the like the joke oh, or yeah. something like yeah. what you know like how do you then go well funny thing <laughs> guy, yeah, yeah like how do you yeah. how do you share that kind of private but she chose him so mm. i think it was because her damaged emotional self chose this arrogantly disrespectful man and it was doomed from the beginning because yeah. of their relationship so yeah i can see why she oh if he was a sensitive sweet guy and she hit a spot where she's like i can't i'm having a hard time with this maybe but mm. not like this guy he's a dick yeah and that's he's... true because she didn't even tell her mother uh... no Nope. You know, uh, about it either. So, I mean, that's rough. So you're basically talking about the whole childhood and then being in something for 17 years and not saying anything. Yeah. So I guess if anything would be a trigger, I, it would totally probably be that Call situation. me daddy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, hell no. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, <laughs> and now, was there anything in the movie that y'all felt like could have been left out or, or did, would you really want more, to be honest? I, I wanted more. Yeah, more or the same. You know, I like it to go boom and then end. So <laughs> I think it was a good time frame. 90 minutes, no more than two hours is always good for me. I okay. I enjoyed it. I didn't feel like anything dragged. So yeah. I, I want to watch it again now that we've talked about it. I'm like, I should probably update myself and watch it again. Well, you know what? Yeah, well, ch check it out. I mean, it, it's definitely, it, it's, it's a fun watch. And, you know, <laughs> after, and actually, you know, after this movie, and I, I feel, oh my gosh, I feel like a, an idiot. The the actress who played um, played Jesse, she's in another horror series. She's um, really pretty. That, yeah, that's um, coming to uh, that's coming to Netflix, and I can't. Carla Carla G G Gugino Gugino. Gugino? Okay, yeah. let me click on her name and see what else she's. Golly, she's beautiful though. Yeah. Um, but apparently. Watchmen Sin City. I'm starting looking for a series. Oh, The Haunting of Hill House, the new one that's going to be on Netflix. Okay, yeah, then, then that's it. Um, so I look forward to kind of watching that. And, you know, she's been in her, her fair share of movies, so she's one of those familiar faces when you see her, you're like, where have I seen her? And then you start looking through her filmography. For me, it was The Watchmen. I, that's what I just realized yeah. I recognized her from because she was yeah. um, the mom in The Watchmen. So. I recognized her from San Andreas because she was The Rock's love interest with that and that's what I... girl she's older than he is so that's hot yeah. anyway she she's so pretty how do you even like yeah she doesn't look i don't know how old she is but she does 47 clearly, yeah she does not look her age she's amazing no. so yeah. whatever 
She can get her some rock any day. <laughs> Co-sign that. Now, <laughs> let's talk about what's going to go on uh, next week. I mean, unless there's anything else y'all want to mention, we, we can just jump into our thoughts. on. Oh, curtains. Oh, my and, God. Yardly. And... <laughs> I watched that right, right before the show. <laughs> that's right. What I... the fuck, man? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Holy shit. I have shit. no idea what y'all are talking about. Dude, dude. The show that don't you can't it's seven minutes long. Just wait. Okay, first of all, I will never in a million years show this to my mother in law because <laughs> she is obsessed. When she comes over here and the second it turns dark, she has to close all our curtains, all our blinds, and I'm like, why? Like I leave everything open. Like I'm like, I don't give a shit. There's nothing nobody's here. Nobody gives a shit. And she's obsessed with it. If she saw this, she would have a fucking heart attack. Like, like the video, have a fucking heart attack or a poison or whatever the hell it was. But what what the fuck was that, dude? Well, <laughs> well, well the, you, you didn't. Well, I'm taking it that Moni did not watch the. the no, speech. sorry, I'm so unprepared. Apparently, I didn't do my well, homework. Well, no, it, it's just it's essentially like it's like a seven minute claymation horror short. Totally nice. fucked up, man. Totally okay, so, fucked up. Yeah, it's real messed up, but it's like this. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like an old woman, and I think it's her. Uh, she oh had two gosh. sons, and uh, one of the sons dies in an accident. I mean, didn't he have on like some type of a? Um, he, was he was gay. A, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he was leaving like a gay pride thing or something, <laughs> and kills himself on this tree. Jesus. And then these monsters pop up and just. I mean, it really makes no sense. I was going to say, can I speak for the audience and say nothing that you're saying makes any sense right well, now? Well, so that's then that's his... That's exactly so... what the spook train is, but you've got to watch it. I you have it to. Quick, and we're going to put it on the um, on the yes. Facebook page. Nice. But I guess he's, like, riding from this gay pride event. He's got, like, this biker jacket or something. It's got, like, the, the, the flag but, on it. Yeah, the flag. And he gets yeah. in an accident, and it's, like, it's so graphic how he dies and then after she recants this story like this monster or something well his monsters. mom no so his mom's like like gets left alone and her other son is leaving her and she's like wait you forgot to close the curtains like all every old lady on the planet thinks that monsters are gonna get you if you don't close the fucking curtains seriously like a a fabric is going to protect you from whatever the fuck's outside, you know? So I thought that was hysterical. And so well, she goes... We, we go under our covers in bed and we think that the fabric yeah. is going to protect so you from whatever's in your she bedroom. She cripples over there on her cane and tries to close the <laughs> curtain. And sure enough, a hand hits the window and scares her. And then Mont like, Yardley, you, like, right from here you get, like, the monsters come in and, like, eat her. And... <laughs> What well, but what I'm about? saying though, but what was the point of them showing that the one son was gay? And that like, what was the point? I don't remember. Like, what was the point of well, it? Well, because the end of it, the end of it. So she um tries to close the curtain, and there's a hand on the window banging, and it scares her. So she falls back and uses what little bit of energy she has left to try to close the curtains, and she closes them. But then monsters come through the floor and everything, and start trying to eat her and and then she tries to kill them because she's badass she's an old mean old ass granny and um and eventually the monsters do eat her and she dies and then there's like this like pause and it shows her in her chair dead and there's a doctor and he's like i'm sorry she died of heart attack in her sleep and he's telling the son, the other son, who's alive. Okay. Oh, oh, but before she gets attacked and, and they eat her, they the curtains open and it was her dead son that died and and her husband, that those were the hands banging on the window. They were trying oh, to warn okay. her. And so she's that, like, right. <laughs> and then the monsters eat her. And then, so then the doctor's like, to the other, the only living son left is like, I'm sorry, she died in her sleep. It was a heart attack. But then, they're look, then he's like, says nothing. And they start looking at each other. And they start making out. And the doctor, like, or the son, like, grabs the doctor's ass. 
and pills fall out onto the floor and they were poison. So it's like, did he uh, poison the mo- Like, I don't know. Well, I was well, like, here's what the, the thing. Fuck? And the, the reason why I'm having some shock because of not remembering, you know, what, what that, you know, why they were pointing out that the son was gay and, you know, motorcycle yeah. and back or whatever. The reason why I, I, I just totally got lost with how these monsters were eating the grandma, the old lady. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that, they were chowing on her, man. They t- that t- totally took me out of it because I was <laughs> like, these things are fucking that old lady up. Because you, you would think, I'm like, yeah, she's going to get out of it. They let you know immediately that she's not going to get yeah, out of Yeah, she's going to die. <laughs> and it's really disturbing. But get, watch it when you get a chance, Moni. It's only seven minutes, and it is awesome. And if you go to that guy's YouTube page, he has other ones. Like, he did a version of the Simpsons intro, but with all the Simpsons, like, getting murdered or something. It, it's pretty oh dope. Nice. So, so this guy's very, uh, very talented. Yeah, it, it was a, uh, I thought, I'm going to watch this really quick before the show, and I'm just kind of kind of fast forward, because, and that's why I was kind of late calling you guys for the show, because I'm like, oh, I'll just fast forward real quick. Uh, no, I fast forward, and I'm like looking, and I'm like, what the fuck? And so I rewind, like, I ended up watching it twice. So I was like late, because I'm like, what the hell did I just see? And then I rewind it again, because I kept skipping the first time. So I had to go back and watch it again to kind of like, how did, what? Because it was so crazy. Like, I thought it was hysterical. I really love short films. Those, And I yeah. love how all the characters still have, like, the fingerprints in their body. Like, they didn't even, like, buff those out. Like, everybody still got all the fingerprints on them and everything. It was fantastic. Well, so. with the Creep Show, with the Creep Show miniseries or whatever coming out, I would love to see little little things like this like in oh, between be amazing yeah oh, that, that would, would be so dude amazing. you need to send that to them do some shorts like yeah. that would be hysterical like the clay short clay mason shorts or even there's a whole channel i found that literally just does sh- uh horror shorts like short films about horror that would I be don't... awesome I don't have the patience, but I do have a stop motion camera here. So there you go. Yeah, I could. So I mean, cool. I, I used to, you know, when I back when I was animating and stuff, I used to, you know, we used to collect all of these figures and we used to do little stop motion things with them. I just don't have the patience for it, but I admire uh, that guy and, and his talent. And I don't know. It's just there's something about claymation and then how you can get really extreme with like blood and gore, uh, which makes it even more fun. So. I can definitely appreciate that. We'll make sure that we post that on the Facebook page. I've never, I've never seen a claymation horror show. That was, and that I've wasn't just horror. Before. That was like horror. Or that was <laughs> hardcore. I was shocked. I really was. I was like, what? And I couldn't quite understand Spook Train. Is that like the 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 maker? Uh, I, I believe. I actually believe that that might be the name of the. I don't think that that's the name of the YouTube guy who does it, but I think I think there's supposed to be um, more of these because I think it's like an anthology or something. But I don't know. Okay. I don't really know. You know, they don't really give a a specific reason why it's called Spook Train. I have no idea. I hope it represents that there's going to be more cars added to this awesome <laughs> to this awesome claim. Well, I mean, I have like total ADD, so when I saw it, it was like thoughts on, and all I saw was Spook Train. I didn't even see the curtains part. So I click on it and I'm like, what does this have to do with a train? Like I was so confused. And then I went back and read it and I'm like, oh, curtains. Yeah. that. And then I thought of my uh, mother-in-law and I'm like, oh my God, she can never see this. She will never sleep again. <laughs> she would die. Well, uh, so. well, well, Chrissy, tell us what you've got uh, coming up for us next week. Um, yeah. So I kind of pulled this out of my ass and I hope it works out, but I'm going to take a a uh, chance and I am interested in this time so I think it'll be fun but um I'm gonna do a show on ancient Egypt mysticism and the book of the dead so I'm hoping that I can prepare enough I was gonna do a movie review instead um but I decided that I can pull this off and I'm gonna make it happen so we're gonna do it book of the dead very nice. Okay. Well, that's what's up. So, Christy, tell us how people can get at you in social media. Um, well, 
it, right now, the best place you can reach me and you can yell at me or say hi or tell us how bad we suck is on Twitter at creepin underscore it. Or you can find me on Instagram at creepin Christie, K R I S T I. Okay, Moni, how can the creepers get at you? Um, I'm going to give you my social media and I'm going to do a short shameless plug. And by the way, creepers, if y'all are as confused as I am by what the hell Yarly and Christy were just discussing, I just posted it to our Facebook page. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go watch it and I suggest you do the same. Um, but also my social media is at Rebel Moni on Twitter and at Moni Bear on Instagram. And if those of you who are comics fans, whether that's horror comics or any kind of comics, um, Image Comics is doing a series of discussions with creators over on their Twitch page. That is www.twitch.tv slash Image Comics. And I will actually be sitting down next Saturday at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern to talk with Scotty Young of Rocket Raccoon and I Hate Fairyland fame, among others. So I hope that y'all will tune in. You can actually go. It's going to be live and you can heckle me or any of the other panelists in real time and make fun of us. You'll see my stupid mm -hmm. face too, to go along with my voice. So anyways, I hope that you guys tune in for that. It's in celebration of Banned Books Week um, at libraries across the nation this week. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Hey, one more thing really quick. Sorry to interrupt Yardley. Um, I just would like to say that we just exceeded on our um, web hosting site, Podbean, uh, 800 followers. And I think that's amazing and something to celebrate. So I'd like to say thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's cool. And, that's um, cool. And we passed our one-year anniversary and never, ever did we, we say did. anything about it. It was so, last month, I think. So happy, happy one year to us. Happy one yeah. year, you guys. And the fact that we have climbed this quickly, um, we're like the top 10 horror for uh, Podbean. And it's amazing. I, I never even expected any of this. I just love doing it. So yeah. Yeah. thank you, guys. Well, thank you. It means definitely. a lot. And, and that year has blown by pretty quickly. So yeah. I, that's, that's mm. crazy. And I actually remember when, when you were talking about uh, doing this, Christy, um, it was, I guess, obviously it was around this time. And I remember yeah. my garden wasn't doing as well. And then this year, <laughs> we're doing the podcast a year later, and my garden is awesome. You know what I mean? So it's uh, maybe the podcast is a little something. For Your my, garden my is growing because <laughs> yeah. creeping it real. Now, um, <laughs> now, you can follow me on Twitter at militant underscore marker. What were you saying, Christy? Oh, shit. I was going to say something, and I don't remember what it was, but that's okay. Bye-bye, <laughs> no, I'll I remember it next time. <laughs> <Yeah. Nice. laughs> But yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's definitely uh, fun talking about Gerald's game. I think of a lot of the Stephen King properties that we have reviewed. I, I, I think that this one, uh, I've got this one kind of high at the top. So hopefully, I don't know, man, have we covered everything that Stephen King related on Netflix already? God on dang Netflix, it. Probably. Mm, I thought there was one more short film. We did 1922, The Good Marriage, mm. but that might be Amazon. Anyway, so maybe yes on Netflix, although I still kind of want to check out The Good Marriage, which is another short film, kind of like 1922 was, mm. um, on Amazon. Although, I have to tell you, because Netflix has been, like, suggesting Gerald's Game to me for months, and I'm like, whatever, that sounds lame, and I wouldn't watch it. So when you prescribed it to us... I was like, shit, now I got to watch it. Holy crap. Thank you for making <laughs> yes. me watch that because anything that makes me uncomfortable, I unfortunately am so fucked up that I like that. And so it really <laughs> did like, like it fucked me up. I was like, holy crap. I couldn't watch parts of it. And that to me is a good movie. Well, so. you know what? It, it made it made you think, and also, like I said, once you realize the journey that Jesse has been on in the movie, you kind of you kind of get it from mm -hmm. beginning to end. So even if you're like suspect at the beginning, well, oh, well, you knew what was up with the trip. Why are you acting like this? And then by the end, of it, you're like, oh my god, that's so fucked up. Why'd you even go on the trip at all, Jesse? Why? <laughs> you know. But anyway, uh, it was. <laughs> It was a, uh, it, it was good. I look forward to next week. And uh, unless y'all have any additional final thoughts, we're gonna have to stay. Nothing. Close us out. All Amen. right then. Until next week, creepers. Keep it good. I must say you look nice tonight. Hope you're not alone. But if you are, throw the mic. Keep you company if you don't mind. I'm just trying to be more.
sociable and open up my mind to engage on these one on ones with a beautiful stranger. Not something I do. You be doing me a favor. Show me a few tips and not to come off like I'm thirsty. Just a down and earth person who always busy working. Trying to make new friends, do new things. Don't mean that I'm out for one night flames. Not saying that's a bad thing, just not on my agenda. If you're not busy, I won't mind. Trying to spend the rest of the evening getting to know you better. It's a little chilly out and I ain't bring out a sweater. I'm just around the corner. If you also need a warmer, we can head to my spot, but only if you want.